Now from the Coastal Empire and Low Country Studios of WJCL News. WJCL News at 6, working for you. WJCL on top of gang concerns in Savannah. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kevin Holmes. Jennifer has tonight off. WJCL uncovering today three gangs called the host of city home. Today, officers laid out information on where they are and how gang life has evolved. WJCL's Nick Notario joins us now to explain how some leaders want parents held accountable as well. Nick? Well, here's the thing. There's something known as Savannah's Parental Responsibility Code, which requires parents to help keep their children out of trouble. And with some of these gang members as young as eight years old, city leaders say it might be time to start enforcing it. Metro laid out the gang issue at City Council Workshop Thursday. Officers say there are three gangs in Savannah. The Hellhole, Tatumville Posse, and GMT. They're on your screen there, also known as the Get Money Team. While this topic was addressed yesterday, we don't know how much of a role gangs have played in increased violence this year. So far, WJCL News told you rapes, street robberies, and shootings all up compared to this time last year. As for parents' role, if officers start to enforce this ordinance, they face a $1,000 fine or month in prison. It's very clear that there are parents out there in our community that have young people that they know are involved in gang activity. I would like to see our parental responsibility on this be carried out, and we hold parents of these gang members accountable for the things that their young people do. Metro is not working alone on this problem. They're working with several local agencies from the state and federal levels. Another thing we learn about gang activity in Savannah is the way members meet. No longer, officers say, do they hang out in the streets. Instead, they've turned to social media, put out a post, and everyone gathers. All this presenting challenges, Kevin, as officers try to figure out how to end this violence and to curb gang violence as it continues to grow in the Hosa City. All right, Nick Sorry on the studio. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. And new at six, community members just wrapped up a meeting on Savannah's east side. They're asking for the community to step up to help end the violence in the streets. Enough is enough. We're calling for a ceasefire for at least the next 48 hours. Let's get through this weekend and not have any more shootings. It is bad enough that our young men and these individuals are shooting one another, but now it just seems as if their involvement becomes reckless and that endangers the community as a whole. This after four shooting incidents this week. Now city leaders aren't saying if the shootings were gang related. WJCL bringing you the latest on the four shootings this week. Two happened late last night. The first incident just after 1030 in the 1200 block of Northeast 36th Street between Live Oak and Cedar Streets. Then another shots fired report at Ohio and Pennsylvania Avenues. They found no shooting victim at either of the scenes, although officers later learned one person arrived at the hospital with a gunshot wound. It's unclear if that person was involved in these incidents. And these incidents come after two other shootings in Savannah this week. One happened around 2.45 Thursday morning. Officers say Kenneth Hargrove was shot in the 2300 block of Ogeechee Road. And WJCL was on the scene of another shooting around 8.30 Wednesday night. Officers say a man was shot at Utah Street and Pennsylvania Avenue. If you have any information on any of these crimes, call the Metro Police Crime Stoppers line. That number's on your screen, 912-234-2020. You can also text Crime Stoppers and text CSTOP2020 and your tip to crimes. Remember, you can remain anonymous and you could qualify for a cash reward. WJCL, working for you to track crime in your area, and you can as well. To track crime in your neighborhood, just visit our website, WJCL.com. Look for the Metro Crime Map. It's under our web link section. Turning now to Buford County, where deputies there are looking for an attempted murder suspect. Jamil Washington is wanted for multiple charges, including attempted murder and possession of a firearm by a felon. Deputies say he may be living in the Hardyville area near Stort Point of Seabrook. They say he should be considered armed and dangerous. Anyone with any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. A Savannah Road is back open after an accident involving a train and a car. The crash happened just before 2 this morning on Stiles Avenue, just north of Gwinnett Street. A Norfolk Southern train crashed into a car going south on Stiles Avenue. One person in the car was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. For the first time in 16 years, Savannah's elected leaders are about to receive a pay raise. Alderman approving the increase at yesterday's city council meeting. After the election, the salary for an alderman will increase more than $10,000 and the mayor will see a $15,000 pay bump. City leaders say they wanted to increase salaries to match those of the Chatham County Commission. Each elected official is still a part-time position, by the way. Time now for a first look at your forecast at 6 with meteorologist Samar Theodore. Our Football Friday crews were singing praises to your name today. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, plenty of... 
dry conditions out there. Great temps. Definitely fall. Let's go ahead and take a look right now at that temperature map. 77 degrees in Savannah right now. We're looking at 80 in Sylvania, also in the mid to upper 70s throughout much of the region, but holding on to that 81 degrees down in Baxley right now. Uh, just around average for this time of year, not too far off, but definitely comfortable. For your storm tracker, satellite, and radar, we are seeing dry conditions throughout the coastal empire and low country. Not only dry, but clear, mostly sunny skies, and we'll probably have mostly clear nights. Temps are going to fall into the upper 50s as we head throughout the overnight hours. Now you're going to want to stay tuned. In our Storm Tracker weather headlines, we've got a few things to talk about. First, a dry cold front. What is that? How's it going to impact us? That we'll take a look at during your weekend forecast. But also, it's football frenzy.